Hey everybody, I hope that you are all having a blessed day. I know I've been on quite a journey with Appa lately. God has really been holding me through and just giving me a strength that I don't have inside that's all Him. Um, so that I can bear it as He allows all these pains and broken pieces from deep, deep inside me to surface. It's, uh, it's been hard because the slightest thing can trigger this deep well of pain that just feels bottomless. And what I'm reacting to, um, the, the level of pain is like way beyond the situation that's triggering it. Like it's, it's not even comparable. And then trying to calm down from that and center myself in God, it's just, it's very exhausting and um, very painful experience. But it's, it's part of the process of restoring my soul because God doesn't, he's not content with me just having all these shattered pieces inside and, and getting by. He wants me to be whole again. Um, but he brought to my mind, it's, it's been almost two years since I was baptized. I was baptized on um, August 21st, 2016. And he brought to mind something that um, he had me write that that evening as I was like not able to sleep because I was so excited about my baptism. And um, I just think it's really beautiful. And I think he was giving me a glimpse of what it was going to feel like being whole because I most definitely wasn't whole again at the time I was writing this, but I think he was giving me a glimpse of the work he was going to be doing in me. Because he knew that there would be a moment like this week when everything would just be getting to be so much and I would have trouble believing that I was ever going to be whole. I would have trouble believing that it was possible to be more than all of this overwhelming pain. So I just wanted to read this to y'all and tell you that, you know, God's, sometimes the refining fire is just intense and painful and there's so much chaos and everything. It's hard to see. It, it's hard to keep your eyes on God and what he's doing. And it's hard to, to keep your eyes on, on where he's taking you. But um, the work he's doing is beautiful. So anyways, here it is. Too excited about tomorrow to sleep. Instead, I keep taking moments to contemplate the dramatic change that has been brought out within me. As I sit here quietly, I can feel the peaceful comfort of the Holy Spirit. I feel content and safe and loved. I know that whatever life throws at me next, I am far from alone and that I will have the inner strength to face any challenge. There's no stress, anxiety, worry, no hopelessness from putting my faith in the wrong places, no anger or fear. I just feel peace, contentment, and pure joy of life. The pain and the symptoms that plagued me are either lessened or completely gone. I'm grateful for the healing to my body because the pain I experienced every waking moment was becoming unbearable. However, the greatest healing that has come over to me is to my heart and soul. I was so shattered emotionally and spiritually. Inside I was like a plain, pane of glass that was not only shattered into pieces, but crumbled into dust so fine you could never imagine making it whole again. Not only had those wounds to my inner window been mended, but it's been made more beautiful than ever before. It's like before my window was shattered, 
It was made of dirty, cloudy glass. It was hard for light to shine through. Since my rebirth, the pieces had been collected and transformed into a beautiful stained glass window that tells a beautiful story while allowing the light to shine through in all its glory. The Lord took these broken pieces and turned them into something truly beautiful and uniquely me. He didn't erase the marks of the experiences that tarnished and shattered me inside. He just changed it from a shattered mess into a beautiful arrangement. He took those thousands of broken pieces, cleaned them up, and arranged them to form a picture of who I am. And all those broken edges catch the light and refract it so that if you stand in my window, you're covered in tens of thousands of rainbows. See, that's what Jesus does. He takes a human soul that seems broken beyond repair, that is so damaged by negative life experiences, all hope seems lost, and he makes it something beautiful. He uses those broken pieces inside of you to make the light shine through with even more beauty and strength, but only if you let him. You see, Jesus is a gentleman. He will always stand by you, giving you strength and courage and whatever you absolutely need to survive the challenges in your life. However, he will not force himself into your heart. He will not force you to believe in him or worship him. He wants to help all of us so badly and hates to see us suffer, but he allows us the space and time that we need to find our inner faith in him. He allows us to ask for his forgiveness and invite him into our soul. Some days so much bad stuff happens that it is easy to feel angry with God. It's easy to blame him for the evils of this world. We forget that there is great evil on this world because dark forces woo the hearts and minds of people, making them blind to the Holy Spirit. These forces try to spread as much misery, despair, death, sickness, poverty, and hopelessness as possible. We can see these terrible tragedies in life, but it can be harder to see the ways that God helped us all he could during those times. I can see so many blessings he sent me over the years. The biggest one was Spunky. When I was given Spunky, my despair was so deep. I was praying to God he would let me die on the operating table so I'd no longer have to suffer. God heard my despair and made sure Spunky was sent in order to give me something to live for again. Sometimes God's blessings feel like tragedies. Fairly quickly after returning to California to attend film school, I felt like I had made a terrible mistake of my life. I was racking up student loans going to school to study an industry that was starting to give me bad vibes. Sure, I liked photography and editing, but the way the industry works, there's no heart in it. Why did I stupidly think I needed a bachelor's degree to be anybody when I was thriving working at Disney and networking with management? Then I started going blind and my whole world fell apart. Living in Davis meant that I got to go to the UC Davis ER when I found out I had papilledema and they diagnosed me in a single night. Within a few weeks, my first surgery kept me from going blind. When I was too sick to return to school or work, I was able to move in with my grandparents because they were only a few hours away. If I had stayed in Florida, I might not have been diagnosed. I wouldn't have had the support system I have in California. Not to mention I likely wouldn't have gotten disability because it's notoriously hard to get disability in Florida. So the greatest regret, the biggest mistake in my life was actually God reaching out and protecting me. He made sure I was in the right place at the right time against all earthly logic because his ways are higher than our ways. I've made mistakes in my life. I've lived through tragedy and suffering, but I wouldn't trade those experiences for anything. They've helped to shape me into the person I am today. I am stronger and better for having lived them. They have brought amazing people into my life. Most importantly, they have strengthened my faith in a way that those who have never been to the depths of despair cannot imagine. 
the stained glass window of my soul shines through with 10,000 rainbows and tells a story that is uniquely mine, beautiful in its own right. So as I count down the hours to my baptism, I feel filled with joy, peace, contentment, and thankfulness that this is my world now. Thank you so much for saving me, Jesus. I am in awe of the power and beauty and the beauty you have transformed my tortured soul into. The thing is that I wasn't healed when I wrote that. But I do remember that I had that week where I felt like I was healed. And I think he had me write this and he gave me that experience so that when uh, my healing process got to be a lot to handle, um, that I would have something to hold on to. And it is beautiful. and. And I know that that is what he's doing. So I just wanted to tell you all that God is wonderful. Even in the moments when I'm sobbing, sobbing from the pain inside and, and not really having the will to live because of how intense it is, he's still good and he's still working and, and what he does is beautiful, even in the midst of trial, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of chaos, I'll stand by my Jesus, right? Love you all. Bye.